Hey everybody, this is David at Barnyard Bees, and today's video is about where do bees get pollen through the winter. Where they get it, Lizzie? Lizzie the bee dog, she's got to be in the videos. Well, if you go out and you look through your yard, at least here in North Georgia, now I know the further north you go, it's going to be less and less but these dandelions like you see here and there's a whole grouping of them with several of them right here very low growing dandelions and the reason they're low growing like that where they're just about an inch or so off the ground is because the lawnmower cuts them down and over a period of time just the the little short ones are the only ones that exist so now in spring some of them will get up a little bit higher but but that's part of the reason. Another reason too is that the winter dandelions seem to be just a little bit lower to the ground as well. There's a whole grouping of them right here. And today is about 39 degrees 40. And I went out and watched a few hives barely moving. They're still in cluster and I wasn't even, even expecting to see a bee. But there's a handful of them coming out. It just, it's very cold out but if you would come out here on a day that's about 50 degrees you would see them working these dandelions and a lot of times people go out and they'll look in their hives look at bees coming in with pollen they're like where in the world do they get pollen in the winter time well these little dandelions survive a pretty good freeze i mean it's it's been in the low 20s which i know Compared to like northern states, I know some of them, I'm sure, 20 below already, but at least here in North Georgia. Uh, and, and that's another reason I think why it's such a, a good state to raise bees in. Is, is because it, the coldest the temperatures get in the wintertime, here in January, come January, it seems like we get about a week or two where it'll get into the single digits. And it, it'll come out of that and it'll start warming up. It's like it does that every year. It's like that's the low as it gets. But my point is this with uh, with the pollen. Now they bring in very little, but still people are wondering where in the world they get it from. But if you go out and you look in your yard, you'll see things like dandelion. Uh, here's some wild hembit. And this hembit is absolutely everywhere. And it takes a pretty good freeze to kill it. Now, when it gets down in the teens and the single digits, it'll start killing this, this hembit off. See, like right here around this propane tank, it is just solid hembit. You see it growing right here, and it's not got cold enough to kill it, even though it's been in the low 20s. And look, it's still, it's still got a lot of bloom on it as well. So, What will happen come January, or even even before that, because it's supposed to get cold here in the next few days, it's supposed to get really cold. It'll eventually, and that's one reason I wanted to get this on video, because this won't be here. Probably once it gets down into the teens and the single digits, it'll finally kill it off. Uh, but up until then, those bees will still work and bring in pollen from this. It's very little. We still open feed with pollen. But if you don't open feed and you see them bringing in pollen, this is why. This is the stuff that they're bringing in. And even in certain remote places, and it's rare to see now, uh, you might even see an occasional goldenrod protected down in a valley with a, with a lot of brush around it that the cold has just not got to yet. It's rare to find, but occasionally you do see that. Now, right here we're by the red maple i planted these years ago and when they were just uh oh two foot high probably just little twigs and it's for me it works really good because i know that i use this as a sign once this blooms out they'll start you'll look out here and that'll they'll be bees all over this red maple 
for the pollen and the nectar, what little bit of nectar it has. And they'll be bringing in massive amounts of pollen at that time. Not only from this tree, but just all over everywhere there's red maples. It's, it's the first, it comes about, it depends on the winter, how cold it gets, anywhere from mid-February to late February, usually within that time period, this thing will bloom out. And you'll see them bringing in massive amounts of pollen. At that time, when you see that, you'll notice if you're open feeding with pollen, they'll absolutely, absolutely stop. They will quit feeding on that pollen. At that time, you need to start feeding wet sugar, or I mean, uh, water sugar solution, a two, two to one, two parts sugar, one part water, uh, a little bit of brood builder in it. At this time of the year, you can actually use a little bit of lemongrass in, in it, but it's not necessary. I hardly ever use lemongrass in, in the feed because it causes too much of a robin frenzy. Not so much this time of year, that's not an issue, but I just don't put it in the, the feed hardly ever. I put it in the pollen mix a little bit to get them attracted, to get them to find it. After that, you don't have to. But my point is today, once that transition happens, and you start seeing, or if you don't have a tree to, to watch, like I do, just watch your bees. When they're bringing in a little bit of pollen through the winter, you know, don't pay a whole lot of attention to that. When you start bring, when they start bringing in massive amounts of pollen. Now, here, in, like I said, here in North Georgia, mid-February to, to uh, late February. Up north, uh, well, of course, the date's going to be a little bit later. But you'll know. Keep an eye on your bees and watch them. And when you see them bringing in these massive amounts of pollen, then is the time to start feeding sugar solution water, uh, two parts sugar, one part water. Whether you do it open feeding, internal feeding, whatever. That transition is very important for these bees because once they start bringing in pollen, that means that queen is starting to lay heavily. It's all based on that, that pollen um, because pollen is food for the babies. And she will start laying huge amounts at that time when that transition happens. So start feeding them a lot of sugar water at that time. That's, that's the time. That's the best way to tell. A lot of people say, well, when do I feed? They'll start asking questions. That's when you know. Keep an eye on your bees. When they start bringing in massive amounts of pollen, start feeding them sugar water. I want to put that out. I think that's very important. Very important. Because that gives your bees a boost that'll just, they'll explode come springtime. You'll, you'll have, your bees will be so strong. It's just, you gotta learn to read, read the signs. Keep an eye on your bees, watch and see what they do. That's how you learn, that's how you tell. Uh, don't forget, we have packages, three pound packages with the Lane Queen. And Nukes will have these for sale uh, all the way, pretty much all the way. We'll sell packages all the way through. Last year we had, a, we were selling packages all the way uh, up until June, I believe into June. Uh, Nukes, we never did sell out. We keep bees going here, we keep them going strong. And folks, it's, it's all about learning, studying your bees. Once you do that, you'll learn how to how to do that and keep them going strong for a long time. And and we, we had them, so what we did, we took advantage of that, then we had a lot of bees to overwinter. And so just keep that in mind. Uh, check out our, go to our website. You can uh, purchase, you can put down your uh, deposit down on your bees there your nukes packages queens whichever you prefer or you can call our store i'll put the number in the description uh we're getting ready this year uh we've been taking requests and if anyone has any ideas for videos put them out there uh let us know let us know what you're wanting what you're looking for what you want to learn about so far i put a video out about two weeks ago three weeks ago on the store and most people are requesting queen rearing videos. So we're gonna to try to do a lot of queen rearing videos this year. 
how to stock the mini nukes and um, how to cut queen cells and such. So we're going to go into a lot of detail with that this year. Our very first one of our very first videos of the year will be on what the new beekeeper needs to get started and what equipment they need and what bees they need. So we'll have that coming for you in 2018. Um, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Please pass these videos on, pass them on on Facebook, on any of the group pages you see, share them, copy them off of YouTube, take them to, to uh, Facebook and share them for us. Uh, the, more, the more we get these out to the new beekeepers, this is gonna help them get started. This will help any of these videos will help them get started in beekeeping. You can see how they're they're just real bright and uh, one. I, this is second take on this video. The first take I had a bee actually land and was pulling pollen. I thought this is perfect, and then I messed the video up. Had to restart it, lost it, so I had to <laughs> miss out on the bee. But anyways, please pass these videos on. Please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching, Barnyard Bees.